morning everyone and welcome to our service of worship on this, the fifth Sunday of Trinity. This morning we are going to be considering our continuing series on the core aspects of the Christian faith. Today considering Jesus' ascension into heaven. So as we begin, let us pray. Father Almighty, who raised your Son from the dead and brought him to be with you in glory forever, bless and help us to understand, know and, and celebrate the wonder of your love amongst us this day. Amen. This week in our uh, series we are thinking about the meaning of the ascension of Jesus and the reality of that. It is one of those mountaintop moments for the disciples. And so I thought that as we began to think about how Jesus ascends in majesty into the heavens it might enable us to think about those moments when heaven breaks in upon earth. The view that I'm showing you today is a picture of Sleoch overlooking Loch Marie, one of my very favourite places. Partly because it's one of those thin places for me that makes me look up to the heavens and see the majesty of God. But as we do that, we also realise how small and broken we are until we reconcile ourselves also to the love of God. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us gather ourselves, our words and our prayers as we say together the Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, Hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
first reading, Acts chapter 1, the promise of the Holy Spirit. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water. But you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The Ascension of Jesus So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering such things about Jesus, and the chief priests and Pharisees sent temple police to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little while longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. You will search for me, but you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will search for me and you will not find me, and where I am, you cannot come? On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. And let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Good morning. I'm speaking to you today from this beehive in our garden. Well, I'm not inside it, I'm behind it, safely behind it. But I hope you can just see a few bees coming and going, being themselves. Now, Simon and I know a little bit about bees. And sometimes we have to uh, try and do some research to find some more. We're used to looking after them, assessing how to manage them. We want them to succeed and do well, partly because it's, uh, it's a good thing to look after bees, but also because we like the honey. For all that we know about them and appreciate them, we'll never understand what it's like to be a bee. You can hear the dogs barking. We enjoy our dogs, we know them well. 
They know their habits and routines, and they know mine. They know when I sit down, and they're going to get a comfortable lap. But I still can't speak dog or understand them. And I have even less hope with the cat. In Jesus, in Jesus, we know that our Creator didn't just observe us, keep us so that he could taste the honey, doesn't just enjoy our company. He knows us well enough to become like us, just like us, to inhabit our world, the world that he made and which God has come inside, entered in Jesus. And today, as we read about and remember the ascension of Jesus, we rejoice that not only does Jesus bring God's divinity to us and inhabit our humanity, Jesus also takes our humanity up into the very presence of God. And there, fully man, Wounded in hands and feet, he intercedes for us with the Father and sends the Spirit to us. The ascension is almost the most mysterious. Death we understand, the resurrection we experience, but the ascension is departure again. But what it means for us is that a person, a human being, is standing beside God, saying, Look after them, love them, for I, your son, am one with them. And as he prays for us, we become like God. As is our privilege and our joy, let us profess together our faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the decision makers in this country. Give them wisdom in their actions and help us all to behave responsibly as we return slowly to normal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the scientists and doctors who seek to develop vaccines and medicines to deal with the coronavirus. Give them the skills and persistence to make swift progress in their tasks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of the hungry and disadvantaged in our own community and in the wider world. Give hope to the hungry and strength and courage to all those who bring relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On the 200th anniversary of the birth of Florence Nightingale and the 72nd anniversary of the Health Service, we pray for carers everywhere. Help them to know your support in all that they do. Give courage to the sick and comfort to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the greenery and colour we see around us and thanks for the growers, farmers and gardeners who tend the land. In the months and years ahead, help us all to exercise greater care 
for the well-being of our beautiful world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we come to the end of our service of worship this morning. Thank you for being with us and thank you for coming to celebrate this glorious truth of Jesus' resurrection and ascension to be with his Father in heaven forever. Thank you too for all those who have put together this act of worship so that we may celebrate this glorious truth together. The truth is that Jesus is able to save completely all those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God on high. So may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.